If there is one thing that I love to work on, it's beautiful, but also a bit weird cases. And I think I found a, a pretty good one here. Meet Silverstone's Alta GM1, a rather small micro ATX case, but which can still deliver top class compatibility like full length GPUs and a surprisingly good cooling potential. I mean, this is an Oxia NHD15, just, just so you know. So this is Silverstone's Alta GM1 Micro ATX. I would say mid tower case? As you probably guessed by now, this thing is rather small or also quite thin actually. Standing like this, the case is about 200mm wide, 305mm deep and about 505mm high with a grand total of 31.1 liters. The case is available in black and white, with the black one being the subject of today's video. Now, as I said in the beginning, I wouldn't call this case normal by any stretch of the imagination. Once we remove every panel by removing the screw in the top and simply lifting up every, every panel except for the front one, which just needs to be popped out, we can see why I wouldn't call this normal. Everything in here is kind of reversed. Yes, instead of the usual thing that like 99% of cases out there are built like, the mainboard in here is rotated by 90 degrees, making the IO portion come out in the top. Therefore, the GPU is now just like dangling down. Ignoring the, the weird looking part about this, this does come with quite a lot of really interesting or really important perks though. But let's combine that with the compatibility part. Starting off with the main board. As noted before, we can go with up to micro ATX or mini ITX boards. In. The board is going to be installed in a 90 degree rotation with the IO panel being located at the top of the case after removing the top panel, which is just stuck on there using magnets. The I.O. location also explains why there is a rubberized hole coming out in the back. Due to all of these cables coming out at the top, we need to route them through that hole. Thankfully, we also have a little plastic cable clamp which can help us quite a bit with cable management. The power supply inside of the altar is going to be installed in the bottom right corner. However, the size limitation on this one is going to be SFX or SFXL with a max length of 130mm. Though I wouldn't too much care about those 130s cause SFX power supplies are like very very short to begin with. A quick side note though, uh, make sure to install the PSU with the fan facing the outside of the case, uh, otherwise you, you will be going into you know, choking, choking territory. If that's your thing, fine, but the PSU usually don't like that. The GPU is pretty easy to cover, you can do whatever you, you want basically, with support for 4 slot cores, which I'm not even aware of that they exist. The altar allows us to install up to 355mm long cards, which congratulations, you can do whatever you want in here. Uh, this is a 2080 Ti and we still have a lot of space in the bottom. A really good aspect about the GPU position is that it doesn't need to fight for air. Inside of a lot of cases, the GPU will either have to fight to get some air somehow through the PSU tunnel, which sometimes is like a, a, a solid piece of metal, or it gets whatever the front fans are able to push underneath it. The only exception would be something like a O11 dynamic, where underneath the GPU there is basically nothing, just a filter and then, you know, a block of air. Inside the, the alt, however, the potential air is basically your room. The GPU faces the case's front side, which is kind of like a mesh-like structure with a mesh filter behind it. This way there is no competition for the GPU and it can basically breathe very, very freely. Okay, now comes the CPU and fan support. If we use the case and try to maximize the uh, CPU cooler height, we are looking at a total of 159 millimeter high CPU coolers. If you install the, the cooler on top of your CPU, as you usually do, it would pull the air from the bottom and blast it out in the top of the case. And for once that's really freaking useful. Usually the way that CPU coolers are rotated inside of an average case, natural convection is, is kind of ignored, just like, you know, your parents request to finally move out. In here, however, it just flows out in the top. Of course, the, the, the fan on top of your cooler kind of helps it, but the position really helps because it like just travels up there. But apparently all natural wasn't enough for Silverstone. They wanted to use some force. Meet the Air Penetrator 184i, one of Silverstone's insanely huge 180mm fans, which could definitely use a name change. This little behemoth is installed in the bottom of the case, where it pulls air through that big ass space in between the actual, like, like the foot, and where the, the case 
stops, like the space in between of those two. At full speed, which is 1200 RPM, this thing pushes about 143 CFM at 2.22 millimeters of H2O. 143 CFM, that, that's... Mm. So yes, instead of relying on, on nature, Silverstone made sure that the that this PVM controlled behemoth is just pushing as much air as possible through the whole case in, in, a, in a natural way. Additionally, this air does not only help the CPU to be cooler, but it also helps to push even more air in front of the GPU where it actually doesn't need it. Now, before we continue, there's something else. When I got my copy of the altar, I started to tinker around, of course, and upon starting the fan without even having a system, I just have like an external controller, it produced a horrible sound. After further investigations, it turned out that there was nothing stuck inside of the fan, but the fan was just hitting the bottom side of the case. So it, it appears that there is like some sort of margin of error where some production mistake happened or whatever. But as soon as the fan is ramping up, it is, it is touching some edge and it sounds horrible. And believe me, at 100% PVM, you do not want to have your face near that thing. The solution for that was actually pretty easy. Uh, I had to remove the bottom foot of the case by unscrewing those four screws. And then I was able to loosen the four fan screws by like half a rotation. And apparently that space like fixed it and there was no more grinding issue after that. Even though the issue was easily resolved, this should never happen. Uh, imagine some, I, I would say like newbie is, is building his PC inside of this and he's just you know playing a game and then it ramps up and that's that's no good. Silverstone definitely needs to make sure that this never happens again. But okay now let's finish the cooling part. In the top right corner of the case we got another two spots for 120 millimeter fans. If these are supposed to be intakes or exhausts you are going to need to see in your particular case and where, where your cooler ends and how your whole setup works. As a side note these two spots can also double as SSDs or three and a half inch hard drive spots. And then we also got this multi purpose bracket. There are many things you can do with this bracket. Uh, the first one would be as a hard drive bracket and in that case we can install up to two two and a half or three and a half inch drives on this thing. The second possibility would be fans. In total we can install up to three 120 millimeter fans on this bracket. Doing this however limits the max CPU cooler height by the fan thickness which usually is about like 25 millimeters and this would leave us with up to 134 millimeter high CPU coolers. Doing something like this is a bit complicated. Of course, you will find some random CPU cooler that fits into this, uh, like, like, like 134 millimeter size, like something like the Nokia U9S would be an example. However, if you would do that, even though you have three extra fans, you would end up creating an issue because if you take the fan as an intake, it just hits the top of your cooler. And if you take it as exhaust, it takes away the air of your cooler, which is also bad. So the only possibility where this would be like useful is for example with top blower, where you would push more air on top of that. However, I am not aware of any like top blower which can outperform something like an Noxua NH-U9A, uh, U12A, sorry. I do not see a reason why you would go for the three fans with an air cooler. That just, the loss up to 25 millimeter height is way more detrimental to your overall cooling capability than the added fan can give you. I, I do not see why you do that. So the only really useful application for that bracket, in my opinion, is just water cooling support. By using that thing, we can mount an up to 360mm radiator onto it with the fans either facing outside of, of the case or hidden behind the radiator. In that case, A, the top of the red will always be above the pump, which is <laughs> really good for not killing it, and B, the height of the CPU portion, or the CPU cooler, it doesn't even really matter because no AIO has a water block high enough to make this an issue. So from a cooling standpoint, uh, you have a lot of options here. You can go with a massive air blaster or you can go with a massive water cooler. That's really up to you. However, I would really recommend not to do the three fans on the bracket, not to use the bracket at all if you want to go with air cooler. At least that's not like a very efficient way to use your money. A big, bigger cooler will always outperform those three fans. Of course I did some uh, thermal testing in here. I, I did an actual build which is a different video where I managed to fit an NHD 15 in there where I re replaced the fans uh, with regular NF A12X25s just to get that uh, height a bit down 
and to make it uh, fit into the case. There is a 5600X underneath there with a uh, 2080 Ti and I had everything running at 100% CPU-Z stress test. I had Fermark 1080p 8 MSAA and everything running for like half an hour. All the fans spin at 100% and we were looking at 71 degrees C on the GPU and 69 nice on the CPU. So that's that's the numbers. In the end, the cooling possibility in here is absolutely fine. That massive 180mm fan in the bottom just blasts so much freaking air into the case, while the cooler can perfectly work with that air and then blast it out in the top. However, I do believe that it that this is generally an air cooler case. The fact that this 180mm fan works so great in combination with like the natural convection principle just creates this, this head start and air just generally outperforms AOs in here, I believe. Now let's go over the quality. Generally, the case is pretty well built. Every panel was sitting flush with the other one and nothing wiggled too much. Just don't expect the panels to be extremely resistant to, to bending considering how long they are. The plastic used in the bottom Bottom has a slightly different color compared to the metal sheets used on the side panels. If that's something that bothers you, you need to be aware of that. But for the rest, quality-wise, I had nothing to net, except for that 180 fan which tried to commit suicide. That's, that's, that should not have been the case. Quality control needs to improve on that one. On a side note, because I kind of forgot it, every air opening inside the altar got its own magnetic dust filter and even that bottom fan got a removable one. But while we are on the subject of airflow, I have one complaint that should be changed if they ever decide to do like another iteration of this. In the top, due to the natural convection, the air is supposed to escape through the top panel. After traveling through a filter, after traveling through another panel. Why are there so many obstructions? In my opinion, this many layers stacked on top of each other are just hindering that natural convection effect that this case used so amazingly before. Sure, you, you could use the, the right fan mountings to get some air out, but you know, don't break the branch that you're standing on. For my any next iteration, I would strongly suggest to not have anything up. Here, no, no metal, just an empty hole, this would surely make it easier for the air to escape. From there we could also talk about the question if any air filters in the top are actually really useful because, you know, the air is going out at the top, not coming in, but, but that's also a whole other discussion. A few honorable mentions, the I.O. is Perfect. There are two USB 3.0 Type A's and one USB 3.0 Type C, as well as a combi audio in and out port next to the power button in the bottom of the front panel. Pretty freaking great. Then there's cable management. Uh, we have the usual suspects in form of various cable cutouts and nicely placed cable straps behind the motherboard plate that allow you to uh, pack up everything quite neatly. The one thing that I absolutely wanted to mention though is that Silverstone made sure to make the front audio come out at uh, the top of the case and that's kind of really useful because almost every case that I built in the, the audio connector just comes out somewhere and you need to write it yourself whereas here it is just prepared for you. Speaking of which, um, building inside the altar was a real pleasure. Not that it had any extra features, but the sole fact that after removing every panel, you are left with basically an empty box with four sticks keeping it together. And it's that openness that made the experience very enjoyable. Kind of like the Nouveau Borg case, just, you know, a, a lot higher. So where does all of this leave us? Well, I love this thing. Sure, the fans sucked and Silverstone has to make sure that this never happens again, but ignoring the that one faux pas. The case is really good to, to work in and offers quite a lot for its size. Basically 100% GPU support, 159mm high coolers and 360mm all in once inside a mini tower which is pretty freaking good. Not even talking about the fact that I did manage to pull off an NHD15 in here which is like 165mm height restriction but this worked, which is really, really good. The cooling side is just generally good, though this is not one of the one sizes fits them all cases. You will have to experiment for yourself and see what combination of hardware and fans can you do in here. But okay, this should be all for the Silverstone Alta G1M. At this point, a huge thank you to Silverstone for sending us over this not burning version of an MZX H1. But if you want to keep watching, have a look at our take on Fantex P200A, also a pretty small yet quite versatile case. On a quick side note, we also have a Discord server now, so if you want to join and convince people that MATX is the superior form factor with the rest of the sect, the link is in the description below. Anyway, thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.